Are you going to read out the whole thing? Hmm? What, wait, wait a second. Who are you? I'm a time traveller. Or I was. I'm stuck. In 1969. We're stuck. All of space and time he promised me. Now I've got a job in a shop. I've got to support him. Uh -huh. 1969. That's that's where you're talking from. Right. So. How is that possible? Yeah, yeah. People don't understand time. It's not what you think it is. Then what is it? Complicated. Tell me. Very complicated. I'm clever. I'm listening. Come on, tell me. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly timey-wimey stuff. Sounds like that got away from you. It got away from me, yeah. Wait, so if you're in the past, how can you hear me? Well, not hear you exactly, but I know everything you're going to say. How do you know what I'm going to say? Look to your left. Oh, the, the vlog. Hey, guys. Hey everybody, welcome back to Modern Man Vlog, I'm Chris, and this past week has been full of time travel. This week we have the shift into daylight savings time, so for most of you, congratulations, you're already time travelers. You fell back, traveled into the past, an hour. Then of course you have November 5th, now I know, no, remember, remember the 5th of November, V for Vendetta, yeah, we know about that. But, November 5th, 1955, 58 years ago, Doc Brown fell while trying to hang a clock in his bathroom, hits his head and comes up with the flux capacitor, the thing that makes time travel possible. And then also last week you had X-Men's Battle of the Atom wrap up. Battle of the Atom is basically a small arc that happened recently in the X-Men comics. Starting off with Beast going back into the past and getting the original X-Men to bring them forward to basically show Scott Summers that he's messing up and trying to get him to become right. Basically a lot goes wrong. You have future X-Men come to their past, which is this current present, to try to prevent any of this from happening and yes. to send the past X-Men home. I know it's a little confusing, but it's a must read if you're a time travel and X-Men fan. And then later this week, you have the movie About Time coming out with Rachel McAdams. Basically on his 21st birthday, this guy is told that him and all the men in his family have been able to have the ability to time travel. So he proceeds to time travel to get the woman of his dreams. But there's always consequences when you time travel. Always. So with all this time travel going on around us, I figured why not talk about the three basic theories of time travel. And you might find some movies and TV shows that you like along the way if you like time travel. The first one you have is called a fixed timeline. The basis of a fixed timeline is that no matter what you can do, you can't change anything. There are fixed points in time. No matter what you do, if you travel in time, future, past, whatever, you can't change it. For example, let's say you travel back in time to, you know, get rid of Hitler. You find baby Hitler and you switch him out with a normal child, let's say. In a fixed timeline, you're not going to change anything because that baby that you swapped with baby Hitler is still going to be raised to be Hitler. So movies and TV shows that are a great example of this are The Terminator, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, 12 Monkeys, and here is the TV show. These are all great examples of a fixed timeline. <laughs> the next type of timeline you have is the dynamic timeline, which is basically what Back to the Future uses. Pretty much, if you go back in time and alter anything, it has major effects on the future. Case in point, you go back and kill your grandfather, you will cease to exist. Side note, this timeline has the greatest possibility of paradoxes. Great Scott! Two other great examples of the dynamic timeline, other than Back to the Future series, would be Frequency and a Joseph Gordon-Levitt Bruce Willis hit, Looper. And the last time you have is the multiverse. Basically, there are an infinite number of timelines running parallel to ours right now. If you go back and change something, that timeline will diverge and you will continue and go to the future of that timeline. But all the people that existed in that past previous timeline will continue in that timeline. It's very similar to what DC is doing currently with their Forever Evil storyline. Basically, there would be a version of Bruce Wayne that his parents get killed and a version where, let's say, Bruce and his mother get killed and Thomas Wayne survives. Heck, in Multiverse, there could even be a version where his mother is the only one that survives. 
Another example of this is basically if you time traveled into the past and killed your grandparents, you would still exist, but you would exist in that alternate timeline. You could not travel back, but you would continue on that timeline where your grandparents have been killed. Minor spoilers here, but a great example of this is the Star Trek series. The J.J. Abrams Star Trek and then Star Trek Into Darkness. Basically when Spock went back and changed time, things are different. The characters are still there, but there's minor differences with them. And you've noticed that Spock has not been able to go back to his normal timeline because he is now a part of this current timeline. I shall simply say, good luck. All right, so my brain hurts a little from explaining all this, but let's talk about one last time travel thing, Doctor Who. As you may or may not know, Doctor Who is coming out with his 50th anniversary special on November 23rd. It's called The Day of the Doctor, and it stars Matt Smith, the current Doctor, but there is one other Doctor in that. One of the big fan favorites, David Tennant, returns as the 10th Doctor in this episode. You have two Doctors in one episode. Even more might show up, but... Spoilers. To mark this event, the BBC is going to be simulcasting this episode on the 23rd in a lot of theaters across the world. So if you and your Whovian friends want to go see it, check your local theaters to see if they're airing it. They even shot the episode in 3D, so you can watch it in 3D at those theaters. And then a couple days later, they're expanding it to even more theaters and having special event screenings there where you can watch the episode again, but in 3D. Check your local theaters to see if they have it, if you're a Whovian fan, but I sincerely think you should check it out. If you're not a Doctor Who fan and want to know all about what Doctor Who is, I highly recommend finding the episode called Blink. You can watch it on Netflix, you can watch it on Hulu. Of course this episode is when David Tennant was the Doctor, but and he's barely in it, but it has Carrie Mulligan in it. If you like the time travel aspect of it and you're able to understand it, give it a shot. Go back and watch from the Christopher Eccleston days. It's some great sci-fi goodness. Whew, that was a lot of time travel talk. Hey, don't forget, you can check us out on Twitter to get all the nerdy and geeky delights. Also, you'll get updates when our videos come out. And as always, don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and click on the subscribe button. You'll get our videos in your YouTube feed every time they come out. For the Mild Manor Vlog, I'm Chris, and well, I got a lot of time. I got time travel, right? Just go back and restart this video.